All right, then. You know, this ain't looking too bad. Now, the best of the gaff update just dropped in Warframe, and we have our newest addition to sink our teeth into the gaff, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. And with her comes quite a promising kit. So let's go and look over what's in store. Kicking off things with her abilities. Passive. The gaff has a 35% chance to increase the effectiveness of energy and health orbs by 300%. Now, this passive instantly screams equilibrium combined with prime flow before even jumping into her kit and seeing what's next. So all in all, we're already off to a good start. Her first ability is weird scythes. Surrounding Dagath, she summons scythes that will rotate around her, hitting and slowing enemies coming into contact with them for viral damage and status. After her duration ends, she then shoots out these scythes, seeking out enemies, so semi-target projectiles. Now, these sites will extend the duration of her next ability in line called Doom, whilst also helping spread that debuff further. Now, I do like this ability. The slow scales with strength and can reach up to a whopping 95% debuff to enemies around you, which are easy to hit and also that targets in helps. But more importantly, when I subsumed a different helmet ability over her first, I actually started to find that I missed the spreading combination it provided with Doom. And that made me think that there's a lot more to this ability to keep it in than to take it out. The gas second ability is Doom. In a cone-like angle in front of the gas, casting your Doom ability will apply a debuff to enemies. Now, this debuff converts a portion of the damage that you deal with either abilities or weapons and revisit the enemy with one weird scythe proc over their heads, dealing viral damage. Now, to put this simply, you're increasing your damage output with a second instance of damage output. This scales off duration, so if it lasts longer on the enemy and you've got some dots on the enemy, like Slash, it'll keep re procking until either the Slash or the Doom timer runs out. Now, what's more interesting about this ability, but I'm not 100% certain that this is intended, is that when testing, the Doom ability will echo and deal its damage like a slow tick. So each Scythe proc takes around three seconds, then hits. However, if the damage accumulated is enough to kill the enemy, it acts way faster, providing a nuke-like return. Now, on screen is an example of this. And you know me, I'm not quite the giga brain here, but I am curious if this could lead to some interesting one-shot interactions on particular enemies like Demolis, or even further, but I haven't tested, Liches or Archons. <laughs> Just something to dwell on. The Gaff's third ability is Grave Spirit. When cast, the Gaff provides bonus to critical damage for her weapons. Now, this effect doubles if the enemy is debuffed by her doom ability and instead of dying Dagath then enters an invulnerability spectral state scaling off duration this makes it great as a get out of jail card free type situation however she does have a 25 second cooldown once this ability is procced in its spectral form or if it's removed by a nullifier bubble for example so the more that i looked at this ability the more that i realized i couldn't find that many issues about it it's just good go ahead and cast it you get yourself some bonus critical damage further bonus on doomed enemies and if you're about to die, you can survive and carry on playing in your spectral form, which isn't at all intrusive to your gameplay. Even the 25 seconds is quite balanced, in my opinion, so it's a big thumbs up from me on the Grey Spirit ability. And then finally, we've got Dagger's fourth ability. I'm just going to call it Cavalry for short, because I could not pronounce the words. Dagger summons five phantom caves to charge forwards. Now, these horses can actually bypass walls and terrain, making them great for flat areas, even if you don't have line of sight on the enemy. When connecting with the enemies, they deal viral damage, and if the enemies are debuffed by Doom, the cave will strip them of their defenses. So with that in mind, I actually like the ID here. The pros are debuffing and damage in one swift move, but the cons are is that it can be janky to use due to environmental issues at times, and it's loud. I put more emphasis on that last part of the sentence. I personally like this ability when using it for a little bit, but the novelty fell short with how much of a headache the caves can be. It just reminds me of the similar situation with Styanax's final stand ability. It's good to use, but god damn. So that's about it for our kit. What about a build for her? So as mentioned, I already had a quick idea for her passive, and by checking all of her abilities, she pairs and scales really well by being complemented with ability strength. So that's the main two focuses that I went for. On her build, I kept it based solely around her and her only, so this is no helm infusions, just raw daggeth. And even in steel path survival in MOT, after about an hour or so, you don't really run into too many issues. Maybe at times an energy issue, but pairing her with Xenuric with an arcane energy and equilibrium throw, 
gives a good amount of return whenever you're picking up any orbs of dead enemies. And then going for strength, well, overall, that just gives you more critical damage. So why not? It gives you more damage to all of the viral damage output that you're doing. And on top of that, it will also go and help you strip their defenses a lot easier. So strength is a bit of a no brain here. Ideally, I do think like a doom spread build with range and utility might be something to look into in the future. But for now, I enjoyed using this build and it's effective enough to handle steel path without major issues. So it's a thumbs up from me. Plus, there is quite a fair bit of room to switch it up if you want to. So what about the ability rotation? Then. All right, so the style that I went with was quite heavy balls to the walls at times, I won't lie to you. So if you like being aggressive, this might be for you. Start off by casting your third ability, Grave Spirit. Get your critical bonuses and a cheeky way to avoid death. From there, I cast my first ability, Weird Sights. And I'll either go ahead and jump into a pack of enemies or I'll swing around the corner when the sights are about to shoot out of the gaff. This will go and slow enemies in front of me. Once I've done that, I would then combo this quite fast with her second ability, Doom, to debuff the enemies in front of me, and then I finish it all off with her fourth ability, Cavalry, for that big damage nuke. This worked much better in corridors or semi-open territories. It's good damage, can even one-shot a Steel Path Acolyte, so long as you're not super spammy with your abilities, you should be able to kill enough enemies with lineups to benefit from orb drops and balance your energy levels. And she's also got decent survivability from slowed enemies and your third ability be inactive. So when you pair that with shield gate in rolling guard and even iframes, when you go and cast her fourth ability, kind of like Garuda's blood talents, she's in a good spot to be aggressive with in still path content. So then guys, that's my review and first impressions of the gaff. And honestly, I quite like her. I think my biggest negative gripe with her is how noisy she is. Now for me, it was an off put with Styanax's final stand and it's also an off put here as well. So I do think that in the future, we'll go and see some changes here and there with her kit, especially around the the numbers and the values. Now, I would quite like a bit more quality of life added to her Doom ability due to it being an angled cone that cannot be modified whilst also having a base range of 50 meters. It just feels like why debuff and spread all of this setup when other Warframes can do everything she can but quicker, thus being more efficient. Do you know what I mean? Regardless, she's looking good and I'd be excited to see what augments are added to her down the line. What are your thoughts about the gaff's release? Are you liking what you see? And if you have played her, what are your pros and cons? As always, guys, I thank you for watching today's video and I'll be catching you guys again in the next one.